Hi, I'm Nick Natarella with AdWise Creative. How to remove background noise in Adobe Audition. One of the big things that can end up plaguing your recordings are background noise. And whether you're using it for uh, your podcasting or even background noise, let's say if you're shooting YouTube videos as well, there are tons of ways to get rid of it. And I'm gonna show you four techniques in Adobe Audition on how you can get rid of background noise for your podcast. So let's take a look at four different ways using Adobe Audition, how you can get rid of that annoying background noise. Some of them are more complex than others. Some of them are really easy. I'll show you some tools built into the program and some third party tools to make the job really easy. Now, years ago when I worked at a radio station, I was the production director at a radio station. And that's the guy who actually uh, at least produces gets the voiceover and produces the commercials that you hear on the radio station, especially the local stuff. National stuff, chances are it was shipped in or sent to us, but the local stuff, the ones that the uh, account executives went out and got, we refer to them as AEs. When the AEs went out and got a client on the air, we had to start from scratch. Now, sometimes a production director will write the script, many times not if you have a dedicated production director. You may have a separate copywriter, but in my case, I was writing the copy and producing the commercials. So this AE really wanted to make a really good impression on the client and suggested, well, you know what? You should record your own commercials. Now there are pluses and minuses to that that we can get into another video if you really wanna, or I'll tell you what, let me know you're in town and we'll go out and uh, have a cup of coffee and discuss it. But there are some real pluses and minuses to that. And in order for the AE to make everyone's job so much easier, he went to the person's place of business, which I believe was a bar. Now, it was nine o'clock in the morning, so there was nobody there. Or maybe the last person was leaving, I don't know. But suffice it to say, the recording they came back with made my job very difficult. They recorded the uh, client sitting under a window air conditioning unit in a very big echoey room and you could hear their microwave running in the background cooking their breakfast. Oh, by the way, ding, it's done. All of that was going in the background. Now, what am I supposed to do with this voiceover? Well, I'll show you a couple things right here. The first and most important way that you can deal with background noise is not record it in the first place. What you don't realize when it comes to audio recording, and this is the saying that we use around the radio station and voiceover work. Your recording is 10% microphone, 90% your room. Have you treated your room for echo, for bouncing sound waves and stuff like that? There's a great way to take care of a lot of that and that's, and I'm sure you've seen those foam panels and stuff like that. That is one way to get that taken care of. Treat the room the way it should be and that's subject of a whole nother video. So let's take a look at one of the most popular ways to do it in Adobe Audition. So let's go ahead and get this started. So the first thing we're gonna look at is the easiest, simplest, and most thorough one. First of all, what is the background noise? This is it right here. I wanna first show you what's the difference. This is amplitude view. This tells me about how loud things are being recorded. And this is spectral view. This tells me which frequencies are being recorded and how prevalent they are. So let's take a zoomed in look at this. Notice over here, this is your scale. This is your frequency scale. Down here at zero means you can't hear it. And then about 500 Hertz, a thousand Hertz, 2000 Hertz, 3000 Hertz, all the way up. And of course, above 16 or 17,000 Hertz, the, the human ear can't even hear it. And way down here are the base frequencies. Now notice the base frequencies, see how yellow that is? That tells you that the base frequencies are very, very prevalent. And then right here around a thousand kilohertz, it kind of dips out a little bit. There isn't as much. And then between about 1500 and about 3500, it gets kind of yellow again. Any idea why that is? That is the dead center. That's the vast majority of the frequencies of the human voice. And then it kind of dies off again. Then here's some harmonics up in here. And then it just fades out because the voice just doesn't even speak that high. This is like, you know, dog whistle 
range. Okay. You follow me? <laughs> this right here, this stuff over here, this is probably, this could be anything from uh, a car engine outside to an air conditioner running to um, uh, one of my favorites to try and troubleshoot is when you've got the computer sitting on the desktop and those vibrations are the, vi the, the fans in the computer are running or the hard drive is running and the vibrations go through the desk and then get picked up through the microphone. That's called microphonics. That's something else you need to be aware of. But this low stuff, nor notice right in here, it looks like it's about 500 hertz and below. So those are our very base frequencies. Well, there are a couple different ways that we can deal with those. The most popular one is by filtering it out. Okay, so first, this is the sound that we want out from behind and underneath all of the voiceover. So first, we take a snapshot of it, and they call that snapshot, come under noise reduction and restoration, we're going to capture our noise print. And I normally just hit shift P. So now this has been stored. So let's take a look at it. Let's go to noise reduction, noise reduction process, control shift P. This is what it looks like. This is our snapshot of our of of these frequencies notice way down here at the 500 hertz that's where most of our noise is and then there's a little bit that that kind of peters out around 22 kilohertz we're going to select the entire file because we not only want the sun we not only want the noise out of the silent parts but we also want it out from behind the the voiceover so here we are with our entire file selected now we're going to apply these settings to the entire file now let's take a look at what, what just happened. Now see how that is practically gone. It doesn't show as much here. Going from bright yellow to medium bright yellow doesn't exactly show up, but you can tell down here, this has gone away. And that has also gone away all the way behind our voiceover. So that's technique number one. Now let's put that noise back and we're gonna do technique number two. Let's take a look. At before and after. This is what our file looks like right now. And then this is what our file is going to look like after we apply whatever it is we do. Well, technique number two is with EQ. So let's try an EQ. And personally, I like the parametric equalizer. And what we're going to look at is a base roll off. Just drop this off. And we know it's happening right around the low end here. Now I can tell you right off the bat, let's go up to, I can barely see it. There's 500. See how it's starting to fade out? That is a way you can do it. But if you start to chop out around 500 down at the base area, that's going to affect your voice. It, I start to hear it in my voice around 100, 120 uh, hertz. So anything above 120 hertz, my voice is going to start sounding like this. And I'm going to start getting rid of all that bass that's down below. And I'm going to have not a full voice. See what I'm saying? Okay. So that's one way you can do it, but you really don't want to sharp. You don't want it that harsh. I wouldn't go any higher than 80 or hundred for something like this. And you get a little bit out of it. You can see that there's a softening. This isn't as bright purple as it was, but not a lot goes away. But EQ is one way that you can do it. Another way you can do it is with a noise gate and or expander. Basically what that is, is think of a noise gate as anything below a certain level is just gonna get chopped off. And now the other way to think of an expander is kind of a reverse uh, compressor, okay? So let me show you what happens here. Let's take it to here and we're going to go under dynamics and we're gonna do both. The auto gate, oh, look what it did already. I didn't mean to do that. <laughs> let's take a look at what our what our level is first. So let's just listen to this and see how high it is in our meters. Not very high at all. So we're not gonna have to do a lot. So quite frankly, let's drop this down. Now, we can take this up to, let's, let's listen to the voiceover. The voiceover is way up here. It looks like it dips down. It looks like it dips down to about minus 27, minus 30. So what I do is I'll take this, let's say to minus 30. Now watch what happens on the lower level when I let go. See it's starting to fade? I'm going to bring it up a little bit more. 
and more. And we know that when the gate kicks in is when the sound starts to disappear. Oh, I don't have it turned on. That's the problem. All right, let's try that again. So here we are. Now, you see that? It's already gone. We're at minus 38 and it's already gone. So let's put it back in there. Minus 60 and it's already gone. So that would actually be a decent place. So minus 60 on the auto gate. Now you might have to bring this up, but as long as this level is below this level, you're, you're going to be okay. And you want to try and get as much as you possibly can at the lowest setting. So now that you've got your audio all done and, and packaged up and good stuff like that, and it sounds great, there's one more thing you can do to really connect with your audience. I've got a free download for you. And if you click down in the description, I've got a link to a, a PDF download called Engaging Your Audience, the three secrets to skyrocket your podcast. And it will totally, it's, it's a little bit of a mind shift and some very specific techniques that you can use immediately when it comes to recording your next podcast episode. And that's free for you right now. Just click below. I'm Nick Natarella. Thank you for watching.